Welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here. You're tuned in for more of my two cents. If this is your first time, welcome. I am so excited to have you here today. And if you are a returning viewer and a two center, then what up though? Okay, I appreciate you swinging back through. Okay, let's do what we do. <laughs> Three points that matter most before I get into any discussion. Uh, number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you and I do too. Now, if you guys are enjoying this new I Survived Religion series, child, I am enjoying it, okay? The story times of it all, the live reactions to uh, subreddit threads and stories that I'm finding on people leaving religion or their lives being ruined by religion or them turning atheist, it is getting juicy, okay? And for good reason. I think that what makes this so unique and different for me it's because a lot of people don't have the safe spaces to have these discussions. And if they do, it usually turns into them being ridiculed and being judged for actually having an experience to share. One that could be an eye-opening, life-saving experience for other people who are also in organized religion. And I am one that does not miss words and I am not out here by hiding behind any narrative or anything or benefiting from this in any way. I just want other people to be free and know their truth. Know your options, right? Think for yourself, value your own opinion, value your own experiences, and don't let anybody take that from you. That's the least that you can do for yourself is to preserve your own mind and your own ability to stand up for yourself and make the best choices, okay? So let's get into today's story. All right, so this person writes and says, I grew up in church and was afraid of almost any and everything the world had to offer me because I was afraid of sinning. Mm, that sounds like someone I know. I thought every, everything was a sin, okay? The red lips, the pants, playing basketball, playing checkers, playing bingo, honey, it was giving hell, all right? From the day I graduated from kindergarten, I was destined for hell based off of what I was doing. Chewing gum, snapping my fingers, Whew, it was ghetto. I was, I was not gonna last based off of Christianity. Um, anyway, let's get back to the story. I was then recruited into a cult twice and that screwed up my whole existential belief. I now don't know what to believe or why I am here on this planet. I'm so confused about everything and I don't even know who I am. I know what I want, but I don't know who I truly am. This is this person's third time telling us they don't know who they are. This is an identity crisis sparked and brought to you by religion. <sighs> Every time I want to do something, there is this old religious side of me effing it up. Now I'm just anxious all the time and depressed. I'm not the same person I was before. I'm miserable, lost, and confused. Anyone else going through post-religious trauma? This is a real cry for, I don't want to say help, but a real cry for um, support and connection to know that their experience isn't an isolated experience. And I'm here to tell you and y'all, this is not an isolated experience. I'm going to tell you why. Religion, specifically Christianity that I can speak from um, experience on, strips you of your own identity and self-worth. And I did a video on that after my initial video on why I quit church. I lost my identity in church because religion and organized faith-based religions and organizations don't want you to know your worth. They, if they do not validate your value as a human. Everything is, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have this. If it wasn't for God, I couldn't do that. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for God, I would fail. I would die. I would go to hell. I'm always needing to be saved and pulled back from the wretched, you know, will of the enemy. Everything is always a fight and a struggle and a war that you're facing based off of your own fleshly desires in mind, right? So you start feeling helpless to actually do what you need to do to live the life that is peaceful, that is calm, that is clear, right? That is non-problematic or toxic. You're always fighting a invisible enemy and you don't know how to rely on your own like true, um, true intellect or your own true skills to overcome things that might be bothering you or might be a problem in your everyday life. And you're going to face things at work, but you're going to face things at school.
school. You're going to face things at church. You're going to face things at home. You're going to face things in your family. But the beauty of it is you have what you need on, on the inside of you. If you're confident, if you're valued, if you're appreciated, if you're um, encouraged and supported, to face all of that. It may not come out perfect, but it can be solved. It can get better. But what religious does is it's, religion, it strips you of all of that. It doesn't make you feel like anything is going to be okay because cast it all at the Lord's feet, right? Leave it all at the altar. Leave it to God. Let God do it. Well, what about me? Anybody want to strengthen and encourage me? There's not a scripture for everything. There's not a prayer that's going to make everything turn around immediately. Sometimes I want credit for the good things I do. Sometimes I need credit and I need to be told good for you. Girl, you killed that. Girl, you, you, you know what you're doing. You a bad mamma jamma. Or man, oh my goodness, you're a genius. Right? Your family is so blessed to have you. Your job is so blessed to have you. Your skill is one of a kind. Nobody wants to give you that kind of accolade or glory, but they'll give pastors that kind of accolade and glory all the time. They'll lift man up in that position all the time, but they won't do it amongst each other which is a hierarchy issue that keeps somebody up here and the rest of y'all down here. So you never feel like anything in between here is your worth. You never can get any kind of validation in who you are. And when you go out amongst other people, you're struggling to exist in regular spaces, normal spaces as a human, because you're thinking of everything from a spiritual mindset. You don't want to take the glory for anything. And it reminds me of the time I was on the phone with my mom. It was like a year. No, it was like two or three years ago. And I was ta I had taken my hair down from some braids and I had washed it and I was flat ironing my hair while we were on the phone. And I was just seeing how long my hair had gotten. I had cut it and it had grown back. And it was noise, okay? It was giving me my college days when it was past my collarbone. And I was so excited on the phone. I was like, oh my goodness, my, my hair has grown back. It is so healthy and it's so thick. I've, I've always had long hair, but I didn't have thicker hair until after I had children. And so my hair was so long and it was thick. And I was on the phone and I was so excited about it. And mommy was like, tell God thank you. And I said, what? I said, why am I telling God thank you? And she was like, Christian, just tell him thank you. And I said, no. It's hair. Like, I don't need to tell God thank you for my hair growing. I needed somebody to explain to me while I was thanking God for my hair growing. When I had to wash it, I had to keep it trimmed. I had to grease my scalp, right? I had to make sure that I was doing the things. But I was going to give a heavenly figure the praise for hair growth. It's like anytime you can be stripped of your identity of anything that would make you see yourself in any high position or confidence, they have to take it down. They gotta strike that down. Because in church, it's seen as you lifting yourself up above God, you exalting yourself up above God. That's not what's happening. How is that what's, what's happening when y'all say we're made in the likeness and image of God? Is the likeness and image of God depressed or broke or upset or, or hateful or bitter or resentful or heavy, full of strife, competing with people? Like, is that the image of God? Because that's what y'all giving. When all we simply want to do is get the just due credit for the effort and the actions that we're taking. The work that we're actually putting in for our lives to be good. Getting a promotion on your job isn't the work of God. That's the work of you. Right? Getting a raise on your job isn't the work of God. That's the work of you. Being able to have... Um, the finances you need or the credit you need to get the job or the car, not the job, the house or the car that you want, that's the work of you. These are human experiences that you have to abide by the standard and the principles of the world in this real society in order to gain the benefits of. But when you're in church, they strip you of that. They don't want you to take any accountability or any glory or any praise or any of that for work that you do. That's like me building up my business and then people going to tell me congratulations. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. That's none of me. I didn't do any of this. This is all God. I could have never done this. Lies. Deception. Don't like it. Zero stars. Yes, I did it. Yes, I stayed up late nights. Yes, I cried. Yes, I researched. Right? Yes, I found suppliers and vendors. Yes, I found workers. Yes, I put myself out there. Yes, I was consistent. Right? Yes, I asked and it was given. Yes, I sought and I found. Yes, I knocked and the doors were open. Me, she, her, I. But in church, they don't want you to feel like that. So now you have this pressure.
precious soul who is completely lost, know what they want, but they feel miserable for wanting it because of that is what religion will teach you. Kill and die to your flesh daily. You need to be humbling yourself daily. Do you know what humbling yourself means? Thinking lower of yourself than you actually are. I am not humble. You shouldn't be either. I'm not giving anybody that kind of power or credit for anything that I'm actually showing up for and doing. No, ma'am. No, sir. People would love to do that to you. Hell, people would love to do it to me, but I won't let them. <laughs> You're not going to take this from me because I don't owe it to you to give this up in order to make you feel better. No, thank you. Leave me alone. So I hate this for this person, but I hope that in the, the, the post-religious trauma journey, that they're going through and you might be going through or you have gone through, the, the best thing that you can remember and realize is that this is not how this was supposed to be. You only believe those things because that's what was told to you. There is no other foundation for why you feel that way. So change the foundation, change the ending, change the resolve. Like that doesn't have to be the narrative of your life. My life is flourishing and thriving now because I changed the ending. You can have an alternate ending to your story. You don't have to feel defeated because you left religion. That was just a construct that was given to you. Choose another one. That's is, is not that simple, but it is. It'll be a simple decision in your mind to say, I'm going to leave this. But then the work really begins to peel away all of the indoctrination and the thoughts behind it that has been sown into you so heavily your whole life. So do that work. You owe that to yourself. Take back the praise and the, the glory for the work that you're doing. There is nothing wrong with that. You are not putting yourself in God's seat by saying, I, me, did these things. You did them. So it will be a lie for you to switch the narrative that you didn't. You are sleepwalking through life. That's why I never like when people would say things like, I, I'm the reason why you are where you are. You're a liar. <laughs> Like nobody at your job can take uh, the glory for where you are. If you got a promotion or whatever, you still had to do the work that made you get reviewed and get approved for the promotion. You still had to be consistent and follow certain guidelines and rules and, and all of this in order to qualify. People can't qualify you. And that's another thing. People who are disqualified can't qualify you. So it's people that ain't did what you do and they still don't want to give you your good, your, your good measure and your praise. You're letting people who don't even qualify disqualify you because that makes them feel better. And that's what happens in religion all of the time. I remember sitting in church services and hearing pastors say, your degree don't mean nothing. Da -da -da -da. This don't mean nothing. That ain't, that ain't. The race is not given to the swift. Having a degree and having certifications, I don't care if you travel all over the world, that ain't nothing for God. What are you talking about? That was what I desired, or not me personally, but I'm saying if that's what you desire, you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't be made to feel bad about it, especially in a setting where you're giving of yourself, you're coming to worship or to give love. You shouldn't be getting torn down and made to feel like what you achieved is nothing. You shouldn't be made to feel like that. But that's what, that's what people are out here getting. That's some of y'all's portion, not mine anymore. So take a page out of this person's book where they say religion ruined their life and stole their identity. You can have more if you believe you deserve more from the beginning. There are some things that may work for you in scripture and there's some things that don't. But I'm telling you that man-made hate and rhetoric ain't it. Letting people degrade you and make you feel like you don't have no direction and you don't know your path. That is, they say that, the, that uh, Satan is the author of confusion. Religion is. It will confuse you about who you are and what you should actually be trying to attain. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do that to you. Don't let them do that to you. Do that to you. Do that to you. Don't let them do it. Come on. Music video. Yes. Do that to you. Do that to you. Do that to you. Don't let them do it to you. Don't let them. Okay. All right. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Go ahead. If you have a story that you would like me to share of your experiences, send it to me 
in email format. I will leave the, the email address in the description box below and you can get everything you need to know from down there, okay? All right, if you've enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe to the channel. I would love to add you to my two cents crew. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.